Hi all you wonderful people and welcome to the Saturday Surface Interval in association with Empora. Today we're talking about training. Scuba training is structured like a tree. Uh, if you have the main core courses, they're, they're the ones that teach you the basics, uh, and then you can branch off onto many tens or even hundreds of different specialities. You can do a specialty course in just about any aspect of scuba diving. If you want to go diving on a boat, there's a boat speciality. If you want to go diving at night, there's a night speciality. There's honestly very little stopping you from going scuba diving at night uh, or in a dry suit without that certification. Uh, if you're renting a dry suit, then they may ask to see your cert, but if you're buying one, I mean, I've never been asked to produce my dry suit certification, so there's nothing really stopping you, but specialities will expand your knowledge and skills in a safe environment. Sure, you can buy a dry suit and just jump into the water, but it is much, much safer if you do the specialty first. For this list, I started off with five, uh, but then I just kept remembering more and more interesting ones, so there's just gonna be a whole bunch of courses that I think are worth looking at. Nitrox is a given. Uh, if you go on any top specialty list online, I will bet almost anything that Nitrox will be somewhere on all of those lists because it's a great introduction to how changing your gas mixture can affect your diving and it also makes your diving safer. Air is wonderful, uh, and I can say that because I've been breathing it for 30 plus years. Uh, and when you start mixing gases and changing the composition of the gas that you're breathing, especially at depth, it does some very interesting things. But it's very important to know what these things are if you want to use it correctly. Nitrox and other mixed gas courses focus and explain how these changes can affect your diving and how to stay safe as well. It's very easy to get into trouble without knowing it by breathing the wrong gas at the wrong depth and your Nitrox course and other mixed gas courses uh, will teach you how to analyse your gas, how to set that up on your dive computer and it's just good for your diving knowledge as well so that you can learn about partial pressures, maximum depths, why are no decompression limits are the way they are. Nitrox and further courses will start you down the road of understanding better what gases and pressure does to your body so you can better understand your diving in general. If you're wanting to expand your knowledge and skills beyond recreational diving, then there are other more advanced courses available. If you want to learn about diving on different equipment setups and how different training agencies do things, a fundamentals course is a great mixing pot of other training agencies and diver levels. It's basically a crossover course to teach all of the required fundamental skills and make sure that all divers on the course are up to scratch. Chances are you'll be on the course with other divers from other agencies and different training levels as well, but you're all treated the same and you'll cover everything from buoyancy and different types of fin kicks to equipment configuration and why divers do things in different ways. If you want to dive on twins, then this is a great place to start. You'll learn about equipment setups as well as procedures and how they differ to diving on single cylinders. The rescue course is where you start to look outwards and become a more effective member of a diving team. Up until this point, you're learning things to make yourself better for your own diving, but rescue is almost purely about learning how to take care of others. There is a portion of the course that will teach you about self-rescue, learning about looking after yourself should something go wrong or before it goes wrong preferably. You need that kind of foundation before you can then start looking after others. After rescue, the simple act of you being there will increase the safety of the dive site. Rescue teaches you how to rescue victims in and out of the water and the signs and signals that can often be overlooked before an issue. Most divers, they won't notice subtle signs on their divers, on other divers or their equipment that at the time are relatively harmless, but in the water could be quite dangerous. A quiet diver not really engaging with the rest of the group or a small hiss of air from a hose. If you just ignore these things, they could lead to trouble down the road. So if you haven't done your rescue, it's a very fun course because you're going to be doing all sorts of interesting exercises, but it's well worth your time as well. Uh -huh. 
anything that you might need that's more specific to your location or style of diving is just a no-brainer. If you dive in cold waters or for extended periods under the water, dry suit. If you live near cenotes, then cave diver. If you want to dive under ice, then ice diver. If there's a specific style of diving that you want to take part in, then it's the best course for you to do a course on it. If you live in the tropics and you have zero interest in Arctic diving, then there's little point in signing up for dry suit or ice diver courses. So you can focus on other courses that do affect your diving, something like, I don't know, drift dive or fish ID, something like that that's specific to where you are. When you ditch all of the scuba kit to go free diving, you'll learn about how to exist in and around the water without relying on clunky equipment to keep you down there. You'll learn about breathing techniques and how to move in the water more effectively and fluidly. By learning more about your breathing in and around the water, you'll be more effective at scuba diving because you understand your body's rhythm a bit better and be used to water in and around your face. Just moving through the water after a freediving course, you'll find yourself moving through the water more fluidly, conserving energy as you go. With somebody else focusing on your movements and giving you tips in the water, they can guide you how to move more efficiently in the water, which makes you more efficient, um, both while snorkeling and while scuba diving. More efficient means that you can stay down for longer because you're not wasting energy or gas, so you can enjoy your diving a bit more. One of my favourite things about diving is understanding what things are underwater. It's all well and good swimming around a shipwreck without knowing its exact name or what it specifically did before it sank, but it's so much more interesting if you do know a bit more about it and what you're looking at. The same goes for fish. Fish ID will help you to identify what you're actually looking at. It's not just the specific lesser spotted such and such a fish that you're going to learn about. You're going to learn about different families of fish so that you can at least identify and know that that fish is probably going to be a, a butterfly fish or something because of the shape or the color or if it doesn't really conform to any one generic phen uh, phenotype then it's probably going to be a wrasse because they look like anything. You'll learn about how they behave in the water and how fish can change their looks as they grow up as well and which gender they are, it defines what they look like. So beforehand, you would have thought that you'd seen three different fish on a single dive, but actually one was a juvenile, one was a male and the other one was a female. They just all look different, but they're actually the same fish. Self-Reliant is one of the courses that's better named Self-Reliant instead of Solo Diver, which is when it first came out. Solo Diver had that kind of implication that you're learning to go diving by yourself, which even if you're the most experienced diver in the world, isn't a great idea. It's always better to have a buddy with you your buddy is essentially a sentient bailout tank that just follows you around and can help you solve problems. But what Self-Reliant teaches you is how to care for yourself if, you know, in the unlikely event that your buddy disappears for whatever reason. You'll learn about redundancy and self-rescue so that if something should go wrong and your sentient bailout tank isn't right next to you, you can fix the problem by yourself, or more likely identify the problem before it even becomes a problem. So self-reliant is actually a great course to consider. So there are a few of my favorite diving courses. If you do all of those, you'll be a pretty well-rounded diver by the end of them. But let me know your favorite course was uh, and why, uh, or if I forgot any good ones, let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to check out simplyscuba.com. We've got some amazing things to see over there on the website. And of course, our merch store in the banner underneath this video on YouTube. Thank you for watching and of course, safe diving.